Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy. We are once again playing Elite Dangerous and today I have a very special kind of different video for you because um, as you know if you uh, are following the channel I'm currently doing an exploration tutorial and I was looking for a good place to go for the tutorial um, and then I came across something, uh, something a bit odd um, and I'm going to, to show you guys because I I need your help, to be honest. I'm fresh out of ideas. So, I was looking around for, for big clusters of um, of blue stars because the, the, these high mass blue stars because they're the most valuable to scan, basically. And I came across in uh, in a nebula not too far from populated space that there was this weird cluster of um, of blue O type stars. All of them are O type. Um, that were kind of arranged in small groups, as you can see here, we have a small group here, and a group here, and a group here. And they were all arranged in like 12 groups on a line, and, well, that line points in the direction of populated space. So I was thinking, what the hell's going on here? And then I noticed that the name of all these stars, they are all called S171, and they're a number. So we can see S171.32, and here we have S171.45. So I thought, okay, fair enough. What uh, would happen if I took uh, all of these stars and wrote down their name and the group they're in? So this would be group 1, the next would be group 2. We have all these 12 groups. If I wrote that down and then sorted this by their name, then could I then convert this maybe if it was a number in base 12 could I then convert this to a number back in base 10 um, and yeah sure you can do that, it's not too difficult if you have a background in math in mathematics it's not too difficult to convert a number from base 12 back to base 10 but that didn't give me anything useful, nothing that made any sense, I mean, the numbers were far too big to make any sense uh, it being coordinates or timestamps or anything, I couldn't really make sense of it um, and I'm going to show you guys later in the video how I got the data uh, for all of this. Um, and then I thought, oh wait, I was on another exploration trip like a year ago and I went by the EU Nebula where I encountered something very similar. So if we go ahead and look up the EU Nebula, you will see over here, we have a very very similar setup. This time it's just F-type stars and again they are arranged and this time it's very clear to see very parallel lines that they are all arranged in. So my initial thought was because we look at this, I mean, this points towards populated space as well. So I thought, wait a, wait a minute, is this just a residual for the way that the stars are generated in the game? I mean if the stars were generated in Cartesian coordinate, that's the normal x, y, and z coordinates, then I would expect, if this is a, uh, an effect of a numerical instability in the floating points that are storing, um, that are storing the positions of the stars, if, if that was the reason why they are spaced like this, um, then I would expect that they would be spaced, uh, they would be aligned with the actual grid. And then I thought, okay, maybe if the stars are generated in either spherical or cylindrical coordinates, so instead of using x, y, z coordinate, you then use a, an angle from a zero vector uh, or one or two angles depending on the coordinate system and then a distance, and then you could actually get, because the distance is uh, from this uh, from the origin is suddenly a parameter, then you would have them being aligned with um, with populated space and, and, and the sun, um, soul, basically. So I thought, okay, that might be why, that would explain why they're aligned, but it wouldn't explain why you were then able to have other stars in the same area that didn't really look like they were um, affected by this. It's just these type of stars, all the same type, tightly clumped together, um, forming, and in this case, only 12, no, 11, sorry, one, two, three, yeah, 11 um, columns. 
Um, so after I got, I thought, okay, so now we have two clusters of stars that looks kind of similar, and I also noticed all of these stars are all named OG, OJV 2009, and then I noticed, well, what would happen if I took all the positions of all of these stars and then plotted the, uh, the best fitting linear curve, linear line through all these stars towards populated space. And I did the same thing with the stars over in this S171 area. Would those two lines cross each other somewhere in space? Um, so I thought, okay, I need this data. And this is way too much data to collect by hand. I mean, at least for me. I didn't want to spend uh, a week just sitting plotting coordinate systems, typing in names, and I would probably do it wrong, and I wouldn't get accurate data. Th that's, that's just going to be too much work for me. So, I went out, I did a little bit of research, and I found this awesome program that I'm going to show you guys, that I used to actually collect all this data. And then I'm going to um, show you, or tell you about some of the results I got at the end. Okay, so I found this program, and here we have it. Um, called Elite Dangerous Intelligent Board Computer Extension. So it's basically a tool that has uh, where you are allowed to download a small segment of the actual database that stores all of this information that is behind the game. And once you have the data on your uh, local machine, on your actual computer, that means that we can actually write SQL co uh, commands to that database. It's awesome. If you don't know what SQL is, it's a language that is used to uh, select data from a database. So basically any company that stores, that has any data, they will store it in the database. And to get the data, you use a language called SQL. It's very simple and very easy to understand. So for instance, if we were looking at that S1S area and we wanted information about those stars, we would go something like uh, select, because we want to select something. What do we want to select? We want to select the system name. We want the x, the y, and the set component. Then we're going to write from, because we want to select this from somewhere. We're going to select this from a table called TB systems. And we want to select this where the system name is like so it should be S171. Oh, 171. Ah, disabled by uh, numpad. Here we go, 171. And then a wildcard. Um, that means that we'll replace the dollar sign with anything. So as long as it starts with 171, it will be golden. And we can go execute. And here we have it. Then we get a list of all the systems with their proper positions and the very accurate data, more accurate than I could ever record it by, uh, by eye or, or look it up or somewhere on the internet. So this is much easier, much faster to do. And again, as I noticed, um, with these numbers, uh, after, I tr as I said, I tried to arrange them in, in order, I tried to calculate their distances, maybe that helped me. The, I arranged them in the group, I tried to convert the group numbers, nothing worked. Now I noticed that um, S171.38 is missing and S171.1 is missing as well. So, why they are missing, I don't know. I mean, it's not just because they're missing in the database, they are not in the game. I mean, we can go in here and we can look up this... Oh, hold on, sorry. We can look up the systems. I mean, if they're in the game, then they should show up. So, here we go. If I look up S171, let's say 38, and I click search and spam enter, nothing happens. Whereas if I search for 37 instead, there we go. You can easily find the system because it exists. So that just tells me that that 38 and 1, they, they do not exist in the game. Um, and that might mean why would why would they miss are that a, s a missing system does that indicate the beginning of something does that mean that the first um, the first group from two to thirty uh, seven is that one thing and then the last of them is, is something else um, I don't know I haven't figured it out now 
I suggest if you're interested in this that you go ahead and download that uh, that program, um, the intelligence board computer extension thingy. Get the data for yourself, plug it into your favorite um, favorite program if that is Excel or any other pro any real programming language, I should say. Um, and tr try to help me with the analysis because what I've done apart from trying to convert all this I've plotted like curves try to see where they cross and unfortunately they don't really they don't really cross and if I take the nearest point to both of them uh, there's not really anything there um, it's just empty space like there's nothing uh, at that co those coordinates so that was kind of a dead end, so that's why I'm out of ideas. Um, you're more than welcome to post a video response, uh, send me an email, my email is in the description below. I'm, I'm out of ideas and I need to figure out what the fuck is going on here, because this is so weird. Um, might just be a, a glitch, a bug in the game, I don't know. Um, but if there's an easter egg, I am sure going to figure out what the hell it is. But I need your guys' help, because uh, this is barking me out, and I don't know what to do at the moment. I'm, I'm out of ideas. I'll keep trying different stuff as I get new ideas, but for now, if you find this interesting, if you want to get follow-ups on this as I investigate it, um, I'll be sure to post videos about it. Subscribe to the channel down below, and put a comment or send me an email if you find anything interesting in this uh, in this data um, but that's basically it um, thanks a lot for watching I will really hope that I hear from you um, and also next time have a good one